Everybody likes Pi Day, right? I mean, I like Pi Day. I mean, I like Pi, right? The number Pi. It's kind of one of those cool numbers. So I'm going to show you my favorite, absolute favorite way to calculate Pi, and it's going to be using random numbers. Uh, so we're going to use Python, but I want to explain the whole thing first. Uh, so let's jump over here to the paper, turn this off because I can't look that way. Okay, so here is Pi, 3.1415, blah, 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 blah. I, that's as far as I know. And in fact, I'm not even sure that might be, is that five or six? I don't know. 3.14, I do know. Okay. And so pi is the ratio of the circumference of a circle to the diameter of a circle. That's the best definition. And it, it turns out that that's an irrational number, which is kind of weird and kind of cool at the same time. Uh, but how do you calculate this value of pi? Well, I mean, you could just measure the diameter of a circle, measure the circumference of a circle and calculate pi that way. But that's, and that is fun. Okay, but here's another way. Suppose that I take the xy plane, and then I generate two random numbers between zero and one. Random between zero and one. I don't know if that's right, but that's a random number between zero and one. So for each of them, and I get an xy value between zero and one. Let's just put it right up here. There's my random point. Now I can I can write that as a vector r so that r equals uh, x, y, 0 in three dimensions. And I'll actually do this in, in four dimensions. I mean three dimensions. But I'm going to start in two dimensions. If <clears throat> So I'm going to generate a whole bunch of points. Some of those will have a magnitude of r. The magnitude of r is going to be equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. And so if this is between 0 and 1, I could have a number way up here at 1, a number way up here at 1, and so it can be anywhere in this box. But if r, the magnitude of r, this, is, if this point right here is going to have the value 1, 1. So it's going to have an r value greater than 1. This is going to have an r value of 1. This is going to have an r value of 1. And I can, like, draw a circle, right? All of these points in here have an r value of 1 or less, less than 1. All of these are r greater than 1. Put those in green. So if I generate a thousand data points, random data points, then I would expect that their distribution of locations should be proportional to the areas. So if I look at this, the area of this piece right here is a quarter of a circle. So this is A1 is going to be pi r squared over 4. It's a fourth of a circle. The area of the whole thing, A2, is going to be 1 times 1. So this is going to be 1. And this is actually just pi over 4 because I have a radius of 1. A2. So the ratio of A1 to A2 should be the ratio of the points inside of here to the total points. So let's call this N1, the number of data points that I randomly get in here, and N2, the total data points. So that means that uh, A2 over A1 is going to be equal to N2 over N, no wait, yeah, you could do it either way. I, I call that A1. Let's flip that up. So that means that I have A1 is pi over 4 equals divided by 1 equals uh, the number of data points in here divided by the total in total. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to generate a thousand data points. If, if R is less than 1, I'm going to count it in this group. And then I'm going to count the total. And then I'm going to get this ratio and multiply by 4. Boom, that's pi. Let's do it. Switch into Python. And I will give you the code because I care about you and your codes. So pi, let's call this pi calc 1. 
this would technically be a Monte Carlo calculation since you're using random numbers, generating a whole bunch of random numbers. So Pi Calc Monte Carlo, let's call it. And let's just make a graph, uh, T graph equals graph, uh, X title equals X, Y title equals y you you can make these in 3d if you want and I'm, I'm actually going to do that if i have it if i have a second and then let's say uh f1 equals let's say f yeah f1 is the dots inside so it's going to be uh, g dots uh color equals color color dot red and then f2 is going to be g dots color equals color dot blue. So what I want to do is generate a random data point, And if it's inside the circle, I'm going to plot it as a red point. If it's outside the circle, I'm going to plot it as a blue point, just because it'll look cool. Okay, now I need, um, let's see, let's say, uh, in total equals zero, uh, in one equals zero. So I haven't done any data points yet, right? But those are the two ratios that I want. I want to calculate the total data points and I want to calculate the data points inside. So now let's say while in total is less, let's start off small. You always start small, less than 100. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is to generate two random data points. So let's say x temp equals random. That's it. So random is a built-in function, uh, and it's actually not built-in. But GlowScript loads some stuff, and I think random is part of matplotlib, which is loaded in GlowScript. So this is Trinket uh, using GlowScript v Python, which technically isn't Python, but it looks just like Python. So you don't load modules in the same way that you would, which is actually kind of nice because you don't have to worry about a lot of that stuff. Uh, let's say y temp equals random. And let's just let's just do this. Um, let's just print these. Let's just do this for ten. Let's just do this for five, and uh, print x temp, y temp, and then we need to add one to the in total. In total equals in total plus one. Okay, so let's save that, and this should just print out five pairs of random numbers just so we can see that it actually is working. It's always good to check that stuff. Okay, so let's run this, and I didn't work. I, what, did I run it yet? It didn't work. In total, unidentified, uh, because I can't spell. That's the problem. Total, not total. There. So you see all these are pairs of data points. They're all between zero and one. So I think we're good to go. Let's get rid of this print statement. Change this back to 100. And let's just say, um, so F, okay, now I'm gonna say R equals, let's just do this as a vector. As a vector, I could have done this in one step. X temp, Y temp, zero. If mag, r less than one then i'm going to add <clears throat> excuse me add one to n1 so n1 equals n1 plus one and i'm going to plot a data point f1 dot plot uh and it the the value will be r dot x r dot y so i'm going to plot a point on there else uh then then it has to be greater than one right so now i'm going to say I'm not going to say n1 is added to that. I'm just going to say f2.plot uh, r.x r.y. But I'm still going to add to the total. And then at the end of that, I'm going to say pi t pi, because pi is actually a number already. It's going to, just like I said, actually I can't remember. It's going to be four times n1 divided by n total print pi is about <laughs> t pi. Okay, let's save that and see if this works. Okay, it looks like it's working. So you'll see here that this is not 
a one-to-one -one rate. I mean, it's not uh, the correct aspect ratio, so it doesn't actually look like a curve, but it, you can see the distinction between the red and the blue. It is part of a circle, uh, so that's pretty cool. It's only 100 data points. And then I can get, I get pi is 3.08, which is really not bad. Let's just increase this to 1,000. Now you can start seeing it's looking a lot better, but still I only have 3.17. If I rerun that, I'm going to get a different value. See, 3.48. So every time I run that, you can get a different value. 3.12. But you can definitely see the curve. Let's increase this to 10,000. Check that out. Okay, 3.135. 3 That's pretty good. And you can definitely see the curve there. Let's do one more because why the heck not? Hmm. That's pretty cool. Okay. So it's working. Um, it's not great, right? Because you have to get absurd numbers of data points in order to get a good value. I think there's a million. Look how long it's taken to run. I think I may have broken. Aha. Okay. 3.139. Pretty good. Uh, okay. Let's turn that down. Now, there's one other thing you can do that's kind of fun. Let's do 10,000. That's 1,000. 10,000 data points. Now I'm going to add up in here uh, rate uh, 1,000. So this is don't do any more than 1,000 calculations per second. So you can kind of see the dots developing. Uh, it's sort of fun. Yeah, isn't that fun? And then once it's done, it'll take 10 seconds because I did 10,000 points with 1,000 points per second. Uh, then it will print out pi. It's just kind of fun to watch. I think this is, uh, they have this animation in the Wikipedia page on Pi, uh, and we just created it ourselves. And I don't know which came first, because I wrote this, I wrote about this in 2010. I didn't invent this new method, but I made that graph, and it animated like that, and there's a very similar graph on, on Wikipedia. So I just think, based on my own, you know, that that's where they got it from. But I don't know that's true. Okay, so that's that. Let's do another one. Let's do the exact same thing, but let's generate three data points. Let me go back to the paper over here and explain how we're going to do that because I'm just having a lot of fun. Okay. What if I generate three data points and I do this in three dimensions so that I'd have the same problem, but here I have now uh, my XYZ plane and I'm going to have, again, a data point, but I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this eighth of a, of a sphere. So now I can calculate the volume is going to be uh, equal to the volume of a sphere is four-thirds pi r cubed. So the, this would be an eighth of that. So v is uh, four over three times eight pi r cubed, uh, which would be uh, one <laughs> sixth pi r cubed. And again, that's going to be, I can still calculate n1 as the data points inside this, and then I have another box, right? It's kind of hard to draw this in three dimensions. Wow. I'm a terrible three-dimensional drawer. So, so I have this ratio of data points inside and outside the box. I really just want to do it because I think it'll be fun. So this should be equal to uh, the number of data points in one over the in total again. And then I can calculate pi r is one. So pi is going to be equal to six times in one over in total. Let's see if this works. Okay, switch back to computer and let's make a new tab because we don't and save that. I'm going to give you this code because I care. So uh, let's go back to Trinket. I like, I like Trinket. Um, just because it shows you the output and the uh, the coding right next to each other. And you should go use Trinket because it's super awesome. Um, okay, so uh, let's start again. Let's just, let's not make a graph. So let's just say, um, I, I'm just going to start in the loop. Let's, so let's say n1 equals 0, n total equals 0. And let's say while uh, n total is less than 100. 
Uh, and, and again, let's do a rate of 100. No, that would take a 10 seconds. Let's do a rate of 500. So the first thing I'm going to do is calculate that vector r. So r, I'm going to do it all in one step. It's a vector uh, random, random, random. So now I'm getting three random coordinates. But now this is going to be in the first quadrant, right? Because these are all between 0 and 1. Now again, I can do the exact same thing. If magnitude, oh, I did, I'm not plotting it. I will make a div, I'll make it color. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. If mag r is less than 1, then what do I do? Well, first thing I need to do is add 1 to n1. n1 equals n1 plus 1. Next thing, I'm going to make a sphere. So let's put this sphere, uh, so let's just say, I'm not even going to give it a name because I don't really care about it. I just want to draw it. So sphere position equals r. Uh, radius equals, so it's a 1 by 1 square. So let's make this kind of small 0 0.01. And let's give it a color. Uh, color equals color dot red. And let's, let's make it partially op op opacity. Opacity, opacity, is that right? Equals 0 0.5. So it's partly transparent. I feel like I spelled that wrong. Um, that's fine. Else, then I'm going to... Um, make a sphere, position equals r, radius equals 0 0.01, that's really small, color equals color dot blue, and then opacity equals 0 .0, 0 0.5. And then I'm going to add in total equals in total plus 1, and then down here, I'm going to say t pi equals n, what was it, n1, it's 6, times n1 divided by n total, and then print pi about equal t pi. And let's call this 3d pi. That's really kind of dumb, but 3d pi. I'm kind of excited because I don't actually know this works. I've never done this one before. Save. Let's run it. Okay. Oh, there they are. They're there. They're just too small. Let's make these a little bit bigger. Um, let's make them five times as big. There you go. I'm, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Let's go up to 1,000. I guess I should have changed that, but... Okay, so here you see that uh, you can't see the other ones. Let's do this. Let's make these uh, even less, more transparent. So let's say 0.2. Let's see if I can see through them better that way. And I should probably make these more, more opaque because that's not really helping. Okay, it's kind of hard to see. I should turn the background to white, but I think I'm pretty happy with that, and I'm getting good values for pi. So uh, that's kind of it's kind of fun, right? It kind of looks cool. It's like a bunch of bubbles. Okay, so there there are two ways to calculate um, pi with random numbers, and I think I might make another pi day post because you know I'm I'm just so excited about pi. But there you go. Talk to you later. You're still here.